I would just like ignore pretty much anything that you've ever heard from any other vegan because it's very unlikely that you've ever met another vegan like me. Okay. The natural world is filled with death and destruction, things I find morally problematic. And I advocate for its non-existence. But I also think that like animal procreation is problematic. The, the end goal should be to ditch this ball because it's a liability in and of itself. All right, guys, welcome. We have a, a discussion slash debate. We've got James, Aspie, and Nick, and, promote, and correct me if I pronounce this wrong, Hebert, I think that's how you say it, but if I said it wrong, okay, thank you. Good, I got it. Well, if you guys just take a, a minute or two, just to introduce yourselves. Maybe start with James and then Nick, and then we'll just get going. Yeah, I'm James. I've been a passionate vegan for 10 years, and I commonly try to advocate for a vegan lifestyle because I believe that it is an ethical lifestyle, the ethical lifestyle. Um, I believe it leads to a lot less suffering, death and rights violations, which I think is extremely important. And I believe it is perfectly adequate to lead to a long, healthy life, likely a increasing your chances of leading a healthier life and increasing your chances of living longer, having less diseases. They're the main reason, like the main reason why I'm vegan is for the animals, because I think it is unethical to breed animals into existence and holocaust them for ingredients or for nutrients that we can get elsewhere. So since I became aware of that, I've been passionately speaking about it online, doing different actions, things like that over the years. And today I am grateful for you having us on your podcast, Sean. I'll be totally honest with you and say that what I've seen of yours online, it's confusing to me. And I'm very open to hearing you out today and hearing why we have such a differing of opinion about what is ethical and the correct diet to advocate for. Because yours is the total opposite of mine. And there's obviously a massive disagreement there. So I would also say, to be honest with you, just to put it out on the table and why I singled you out when I was trying to get a debate happening is because... I struggle to understand where you're coming from, man, in the way that it just really seems like there's so much evidence, overwhelming evidence pointing against what you're saying, that we should eat a carnivore lifestyle. And it just leads me to believe that perhaps you're being dishonest with people and you that's why I singled you out more. Like some people believe meat is healthy, whatever, and they promote the diet. Okay, but the way that you've gone about it that's just doesn't feel honest to me. And the way that you're telling people these things are just seem against against what I believe and what I think appears clear. That's what I would like to understand. If you where you're coming from, why you believe what you believe, where our differences of opinion lie. And I hope that you're not the dishonest person that I question whether you are or not. And that's about it. Okay. Let's thanks for that. And let's go on to Nick. Nick, if you'll just share a little bit about your background and I guess your position, just a brief position. Yeah. So my name is Nick. I'm also an ethical vegan. Much of my position on the matter aligns with James. Me personally, I took human nutritional science in university. I wasn't able to finish the degree, but yeah, basically a blog about nutrition. And I try to raise the standard of discourse in the nutrition space. I will do things like introduce formal logic. I will run formal internal critiques on opposing positions I do a lot of semantic analysis when I am critiquing people's positions in this domain. So, yeah, my my goal here is to just, in general, raise the standard of discourse in the space because, honestly, it's the meta is pretty trash and the standard of discourse is pretty trash. And, yeah, that's all people really need to know about me. All right. I guess from my position, uh, I'm obviously my background is in orthopedic surgery. I'm not a nutritionist by training. However, I'm a clinician and I've dealt with taking people's care of people's health for many decades, three decades now. And so I have a, a profound desire to help people in in their health journey. And as you can see, we have a community of people that all have benefited from this and there are many other people in there. I do have a question for you guys on just, can you, I guess, individually just define what a vegan is 
just so we know what we're talking on the same page, because I think some people get different de definitions. Some people think it's a diet. Some people think it's a lifestyle. Some people call it a cult or religion. But to you guys, what is veganism or what does being a vegan actually mean to you? If you could define that, and maybe there's some consensus among you. I could take that, James, if you want. Please. Yeah, I reject most standard definitions of veganism because I think they analytically just lead to really weird places. And there are not places that I don't think any rational vegan would even sign off on. For example, if you look at the vegan society's definition of veganism, it says that basically the idea is that you don't exploit animals, which implies that if we were to find sentient life that didn't belong to the kingdom of animalia, it would be okay, or at least compatible with veganism to exploit it. So for this reason, on an analytic basis, I reject that particular definition of veganism. I think the values that vegans um, tend to gravitate around are around equal treatment of sentient beings. The definition that I came up with to try to approximate what I think vegans are most likely valuing in most cases is this. Veganism is an applied ethical position that advocates for the equal trait adjusted application of commonplace human rights, such as the UN's Universal Declaration of Human Rights to non-human sentient beings. What I mean by trait adjusted is we wouldn't give a pigeon the right to vote and we wouldn't give somebody with the mental capacity of a pigeon the right to vote. That's what I mean by trait adjusted. Wherever, like, if you equalize the traits between two beings, whatever rights we deem them to have, we should we should regard them equally between humans and animals. All right, that's or non-human sentient beings. So obviously that's a sort of a complex definition that most people would not have heard before, but I get the gist of what you're saying. So if we have mm -hmm. a crab who's only got certain capacities, obviously they're not going to be an architect or write poetry or anything like that, and we wouldn't expect that of them. I would assume that includes the right to life. All beings, you would say, have a, light, a, a, a right to life, right? Is that Would that be a fair, as part of your trade-adjusted sort of scenario? I would extend the negative right to not have your life taken. Sure. Okay. So it can't be killed. So, okay. So not killed. Okay. Yeah. So, so just to give you an example, um, vegans are fine eating plants. Ostensibly plants are not sentient. We're also fine taking people off of life support when they're brain dead because ostensibly they're not sentient either. Right. So we already do this in a lot of cases. All I'm saying is that we should extend this to a wider range of behaviors. A, way, a, a wider range of considerations. That's do, it. do you think that most vegans hold your same position? Because again, you're one individual. There are many millions of people on the planet that have adopted a vegan diet. Is that fair to say? Or maybe James, um, you have a different take on this. Yeah, I'd be interested to hear what James says. But me, me in particular, when I approach vegans who espouse commonplace definitions of veganism, and substitute my definition in its place and tell them the analytic problems with the other definitions, they usually come around to my way of thinking because they're like, yeah, that is pretty much what my values are approximating. Because let's say we found a sentient plant, right? Let's say we found a plant that could suffer just as much as a cow. I don't think it would be vegan to kill that plant. And I don't think many other vegans would actually sign off on, yeah, it would be vegan to kill that plant. So even though it's a plant and not an animal, I don't think it's compatible with veganism to kill it. So I, it seems prudent to me to come up with a definition that actually captures vegan values accurately, which is I, I don't think most commonplace definitions actually do. Yeah, because there are, there is evidence that plants have some level of perception of something. They can they communicate quite chemically. When a caterpillar is chewing on leaves, it sends signals. Other plants know it. It's it potentially is bothersome to them. To me, I don't really care. I think it's a silly argument. I, I don't care if I step on plants and kill plants. It doesn't bother me in the Neither least bit. I. But if you extended that argument to what is sentience, and again, that's, that becomes a, a sort of an interesting definition. But let me, I just want to hear James's thought on what does it mean to you to be a vegan, just out of curiosity. Sure. When I first went vegan, it was just a general feeling after seeing um, slaughter footage for one of the first times and learning that we can thrive without eating animal products. So when I saw it, I felt this is wrong. And then I learned veganism is basically the practical path to living in alignment with your belief that 
the violation of these beings' rights is immoral. But the actual definition of veganism that people use commonly, I agree, has flaws. And I agree with that now based on people like Nick, Nick who have a better background in logic than perhaps the people who first coined the, the word vegan and created a definition with it. So these days, I would agree with something like what Nick just said, which is that animal rights are a logical extension of human rights because they are similar beings. They are so similar to us that they deserve similar treatment. And for them, they have interests that are similar to what we have, the interest in not being slaughtered, for example. So to protect their interests, we give them rights. We give them those rights by law, for example. That's what it, that's what a right is, a protection of interests by law. And I think that is just a logical thing for us to do to other sentient beings. So my definition of veganism is basically about rights allocation more widespread to other species and in a line with how sentient they are determines what rights they get. How said, okay, so there's, there is some level of, I guess you'd call it speciesism because, I mean, there is some level of this is a snail, he only gets this amount of rights. This is a hamster, he gets more rights. This is a gorilla, he gets more rights. This is a human. Is that is that a fair assessment no, that, we, that we are uh, I, w- I wouldn't call that speciesism because okay. the thing that's determining the differential treatment is not indexed to species classification. It's indexed to... Sentientism, there, maybe sentientism would that be more appropriate? if you want to call it sentientism that's fine with me because i don't think okay. it's immoral to damage things or frustrate things that are not sentient i don't even know what it would mean for that to be immoral let me obviously and we can run all these hypotheticals but if i'm driving down the road and there's a kid in the road on one side and there's a rabbit on the road on the other side i'm gonna run over the rabbit every single time 100 percent of too. the time so we make distinctions between animals and humans in certain situations. And you got, James, you don't believe that your diet has no animal death involved in it. Do you believe that there's no animals that die when you consume whatever plant-based diet you consume? There's some, you can see that, both you would, I hope. I would definitely concede that. I just don't see those deaths as rights violations. And that's what's important to me. There are human deaths in the transport and different parts of the system as well that accidentally happened that I also wouldn't see those as rights violations. I don't think. Right. Yeah. So ac- accidental death. Yeah. Accidental death. We do a lot of it intentionally. If we look at pesticide usage in the United States, we kill four quadrillion insects a year alone. That's a lot. That that is done 100 percent intentionally via pesticide. So that is an intentional death. There are plenty of animals that are culled to prevent them eating crops. We use explosives. We shoot them. We sometimes burn areas. We we have entire ecosystems that are wiped out intentionally so that we can pr- plant soybeans and corn and tomatoes and strawberries and all that stuff. And I know you guys say there's grains that are fed to cattle, which is true. So we know that there is intentional death in pretty much any dietary pattern that any reasonable human can actually adopt today. You might, if you live in the jungles of Costa Rica and you pick your own fruit, maybe you can minimize that to a degree. But if you eat any sort of modern diet today, it's going to involve a lot of death. And obviously, I don't think insects are as valuable as a cow. And I, I agree. I think insects, I don't really care about insects dying that much. Ultimately, when you kill insects, then birds die. And there's a there's obviously some upscale things that occur with that. So we know that all of us are c- causing, whether we want to believe it or not, intentional death to these animals. So is that, is, or am I off base on that? Do you believe there's no intentional death in this stuff? Oh, I believe there's plenty of intentional death. I think most of the deaths in agriculture are intentional, but I also think those intentional deaths with respect to plant agriculture are compatible with veganism. Why is that? Why are we okay slaughtering, if you want to use that word, quadrillions of insects and how many, probably millions, if not billions of small other creatures? Why is that compatible? Just go back to my definition, right? So I advocate for the trade adjusted equal treatment of humans and animals. In the case where we have quadrillions and quadrillions of tiny little tiny little beings with like just let's say what that they were quadrillions and quadrillions of little people that were accosting our crops and actually um, posing a threat to our economy and our way of life and it would be an existential threat if we did nothing about it so there's quadrillions of these little humans and they're buzzing around and they keep eating our crops i think even in that case we'd be okay killing them and i'd be okay with killing them killing those animals is compatible with veganism on my definition 
Interesting. James, are you, do you, is that okay with you, James? Is that something you'd say it's okay to kill well, a little, little bitty humans if they're eating their crops too? <laughs> because, yeah, like they are, it's defending your property and defending your life and your, everyone in your civilization. What is your alternative? I would love it if there was, that wasn't a necessary part of our survival. But as you said, it is. So well, go ahead. I, I would even add to that. They don't have to be trade adjusted to that of an insect in order to, to sign off on this. If they were like full fledged human beings, but they were con constantly accosting our crops and causing ex existential threats to our civilization, I think we'd be OK with killing them, too. Like, let's say a neighboring country was like, OK, we're just going to attack your food supply. Yeah, we would retaliate. <laughs> so even if they were fully fledged human beings, we would be okay with this. We don't need to trade adjust in this case. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I just, I, I should have said this at the beginning. I have to leave at 10 o'clock. I, I have, I have meetings and consultations. I do. So we were limited on, on how much time we have, unfortunately. And, and this could be quite an interesting. What, one of the, one of the things I've heard a lot of vegans say, not necessarily you guys, but a lot of vegans say, Hey, it's about just causing the least suffering you can making conscious decisions to decrease the overall amount of suffering. Yes. Some animals die. Yes. Insects die, but I'm doing my best to minimize that. Is, is that not a fair, fair thought or definition? Before we go to that, Sean, can I just ask you, what do you think of that answer that you were just given on the crop deaths. Does that make logical sense to you? If it was, yeah, to me, yeah, to me, I don't okay. mind killing killing crops for us to feed ourselves. It makes well, even if sense. it was humans, like, would you? Well, if, it, if there was humans attacking your crop over and over and over again, what are you going to do? Yeah, like if you're at war, obviously there's war. I've been to war. I've seen the not horrors. Not if you're of, at war. Not well, if but you're at war, somebody attacking your crop. But that's a war, act of war, in my oh, opinion. Okay, sure. Yeah, there's reasons to kill humans. There's reason to kill animals. There's reason to kill insects. There are reasons. If, if push came to shove and I was crashed on a plane in, in the Argentina in the Andes, I'd eat other people. That's the way it is. And I think I mean, everyone, if you guys were stranded on a desert island, you would eat lizards. You do whatever you did to, need to survive. We would all agree with that. Now, the question is, do you need to do this to survive? And then where do you draw the line of what you accept now? Would you just say that we're not illogical there? Like we're not being hypocrites there? Because a lot of people say, oh, crop deaths, vegans are hypocrites. Would you agree that we have a consistent position there? I, I from my perspective, I don't really care about the crop dice that much. Personally, I'm like, yeah, it's, it makes sense to me. But then you hear a lot of vegans will say, I have no guilt on my plate. And they're like, I'm having a guilt-free meal. There's no death on my plate. And I look at that and I say, wait a minute, but yeah, there are deaths there. And so to ignore that, not at least you guys recognize that, yes, I'm causing death by eating, by existing. And when you look at, and again, maybe I'm wrong, but the, a lot of people that I hear that are vegans are saying, I'm doing my very best to minimize suffering. And I'll look at a guy like you, James, you lift weights, you're in shape, you exercise, so do I. It takes more food to do that. There's no doubt about it. The only way you're gonna have muscle is if you eat more. If you eat more, there's more deaths. And so how do you, as a vegan, sort of say, I wanna be stronger, I wanna be a better athlete, I wanna be have a little more muscle, but I know I have to eat more. And, because, and if I eat more, there are more animals that are dying. Why, didn't, why not just- Wait, what's not the do argument this? for that? What's the argument for that? What's so what's the argument that there are more animal die more animals because you're eating more food to, because you're eating more food production? Yeah, but like right, the, right. The, the counterfactual is that we don't have crops, so there's animals dying on wild land too. So what's the argument that the total amount of deaths total amount of deaths is going up by eating more food? If you look at the way food is raised, if you go to a natural landscape, there's birds, there's bees, there's butterflies, and there's tons there's, of death. There's tons of death, but when you go to a monocrop, which most of our food is produced in, it is complete and utter destruction. It is absolutely desolation. There's nothing that lives outside of that monocrop. So the number of deaths is by almost without argue, argument is going to be greater. I, yeah, I'd like to, that's an empirical claim. I'd like to see some evidence for that. If you can show over a, an equivalent area of landscape where we plant monocrops and we provide pesticides for four quadrillion deaths a year in the United States alone over our crops, if you, if you can show that there's the same there, and then again, it's intentional versus unintentional, I guess intentional, human intentional, where we're the ones killing it. Whereas if a bear eats a, a deer, is that human intent? So all we need to do here is just demonstrate that there's more animal death on cropland as opposed to wildland that crop that those crops would be occupying. 
and then the argument goes through. But without those empirics, I just see so, no reason to so accept that. So what about the empirics of there are more deaths in, in a wild versus an animal agricultural system? In the United States, three, 30 million head of cattle are slaughtered every year. I say there are way more wild animal deaths across all species than that alone. Just mm -hmm. if you eat cow, it's the same argument, right? And I advocate for displacing the wild world into non-existence, right? Like I think the wild, I think the natural world is actually morally problematic and I advocate for its non-existence. So it, it, go, <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you expand upon that? What does that mean? You advocate for getting rid of the natural world and we live in a- Oh, in absolutely. A, okay. Yeah, the, the, okay. the natural world is filled with death and destruction, things I find morally problematic. So Why wouldn't I? What would you replace that with? Human infrastructure. Hum, human infrastructure, and we do a. And you're saying we would do a better job as humans. Yeah, I would even go so far as I think the the end goal should be to ditch this ball because it's a liability in and of itself. But <laughs> a lot of people might find that problematic. It's uh, fine. People are free to think that I have a weird position here. That doesn't really concern me though. Okay. All right. Interesting. Let me. Well, so just on that, Sean. Yeah. Uh, did you want to say something, Nick? Oh, no, I'm good. Just on that, Sean, like, do you see where he's coming from there? I haven't given this. I can I can see his argument. I would disagree with that pretty. Well, I don't think, you, you know, agree that if you make human infrastructure over where there is usually a huge amount of suffering and death and rights violations, most likely this. Well, human so I guess if we're calling a rights violation, a lion eating a zebra, is that would that fall into your definition of a rights violation? On my definition. Yeah. OK, interesting. Obviously, that is a Would position. you disagree? I would disagree. <laughs> but what I, do you think I, the animal being eaten would think? It would suck. I wouldn't like to be would eaten. Do they I would feel like it's their rights are being violated? Yes. Think? I think they're, so, being, they're being murdered. They're being killed. Well, not murdered. They're being killed. Right. Yeah. The animal, it doesn't. But what about the animal that starves to death? What about the animal that needs to eat? Should we violate their rights so they don't get to eat and they die anyway? Is that any better? For some animals, yeah, absolutely. But I also think that like animal procreation is problematic. Um, Non-human animal procreation is problematic. I, I don't even advocate for most animals to exist to begin with. Okay. Interesting. Like I was going to say this earlier, you keep on referencing things that you've heard other vegans say, I would just like ignore pretty much anything that you've ever heard from any other vegan, because it's very unlikely that you've ever met another vegan like me. Well, okay. Okay. That's fair enough. And uh, James, maybe you're hundred percent aligned with that. But again, most vegans on the planet I don't think, I think they, they wouldn't want all wildlife to disappear and maybe they would. I don't know. I haven't heard that before, but that's interesting. Let me ask you, because I, I'm thinking about this conventional definition, James, would it make sense to you to say that less suffering is better? If we could do something that would, would lead to less, less suffering, would that be better? It would depend on what it was. It would depend on what it was. Okay. If, so if less well, suffering, well, if, it's an all, if it's an all else equal scenario, of course, less suffering is better. Okay. So let's just say, for instance, let's just specifically talk about animal agriculture. You guys find it abhorrent. I find it, I think it's necessary, but let's just say that. Wait, um, what do you mean by necessary? It's necessary for me to get nutrition, to me, for me to be adequately nourished in a way that I want to live. And I yeah, think but that's the, a, the, the word necessary, I don't know what it's doing there because clearly they're all, all there are alternatives, right? So one way or the other, I got to eat the animal. So if we want to raise them domestically, or if I want to hunt them in the wild. Phrases like gotta, necessary. I don't know what work these are doing in the proposition that you just said. For me to be, for me to be in a position that I want to be in. Again, it's obviously dependent on me, but I want to, let me just make the point I was going to make. If we look at, let's say, and you guys probably find it a horn. In the United States, we kill 9 billion chickens, 30 million head of cattle, millions and millions of sheep and pigs, and a few, and hundreds and hundreds of billions of fish, right? This is to support the population. You guys find those numbers abhorrent, I'm sure. And if you divide that over out over a population, right? The average American eats something like 27 chickens and like 150 fish and if we count like shellfish and things like that, and, and about a, not even a tenth of a cow because there's a cow produces about 500 pounds of meat. The average American eats about 50 pounds. So in total, the statistics on this show, the average American eats something around 200 animals a year. That's what the average American eats. I eat a carnivore diet. Probably 99% of my calories come from beef. I end up eating about two animals a year, 
right? So am I actually better than the average omnivore because I only cause the direct death of two animals versus the 175, 200 that the average person? Is that a fair assessment or would you say that's wrong as well? I, I don't even think it's empirically accurate that you only kill two animals. The equivalent of two animals. I eat the equivalent. No, because you have to include all of the things that are, the, you have to include all of the death that is entailed in obtaining those. So you're also including things like, I'm assuming that you're an advocate of like pasture raised beef or whatever. No, no, I eat both. I, I clearly eat both. Okay. But so, I don't, but here's the thing. But if you guys are saying it's totally morally fine to kill all those little insects to produce crop, to kill crops, the same thing with the animal production, right? The same thing with feeding a cow. It's the same thing, right? The same right. thing so, ultimately so occurs. I, I'm, I'm, I'm calling into question the veracity of the empirics here. So you say two animals a but year. But you say it I doesn't say, matter what the empirics are. It doesn't even matter. At the end of the day, it's going to be two animals plus whatever no, that's, whatever no. justifiable deaths are allowed because they're little tiny humans or little tiny eat insects eating no, the bugs, no, no, right? No, no, no. Okay, I'm calling the question like, Regardless of whether or not it's on pasture, you have to count all of the animal deaths that are happening on the land that uh, is producing that meat because we it doesn't have to be pasture. It can be a parking lot. Right. So you have to count all of those entailed deaths. It's same with factory farming. They're fed grains. You have to factor in all of the entailed death that is produced from the crops that it takes to feed those animals. So it's not just two animals a year. Like it's just empirically straightforwardly false that it's two, that is two animals a year. No, it's two animals that are, when you, so if you can justify eating a vegan diet and all those deaths don't matter, right? That's what you're saying. It's justifiable. You accept that. Then you have to also accept the same that goes into feeding the- What's the, the argument animal. for that? You're saying all those- You say I have to, right? So I take that to be some kind of logical modal well, if you, if So you, like, if, what would be the contradiction if I- Because you're asking that? me to accept the same argument. You're asking me to accept the well, same argument. what would be the contradiction- in asking you to accept one and reject the other because it's the same argument you're making you're saying that no, crop, like you're saying that crop that you're saying like crop is you're saying crop deaths are meaningless they don't mean anything it's completely justifiable because they're i said they're not rights violations okay well the same thing <laughs> they're not rights violations so like I, if you're if your plant agriculture is supporting an animal holocaust i would consider those to be rights violations because that need not happen right if your say pesticide use or whatever, if your crop production is produced is to support the production of like corn, which I take not to be sent in, that is an entirely different thing. So it's right? okay if you eat the corn, but if the animal eats the corn, it's a problem. Is that what you're saying? If you're like raising them to like hang them up by their legs and slit their throats and eat their meat, yeah, sure. Okay. So ultimately it comes down to that animal at the end, right? That's the only difference, right? We can actually just cut straight to the heart of this, Sean. Like we can cut through all of the jibber jabber about the peripheral topics so, and just cut straight to the meat of the matter. But um, let me ask you a question. If you're saying that because I eat two cows a year and the average American eats 200 animals a year, right? All of the periphery goes into their th those animals' production as well. The sheep, the pigs, the chickens. Chickens eat a lot of corn, by the way. Chicken, chickens and pigs eat far more crops and or far more grain than, than cows do. That's pretty clear. What you're saying is that me eating less animals is no better than me eating more animals, right? It's just no, animals in I was general. I was specifically calling into question the particular empirical claim that you only okay. Let's uh, ignore the let, let's ignore animal deaths. Let's ignore the empirical claim. If I eat less animals, is it better? Are you than retracting some? the empirical claim? Just to be clear, no, I'm not. But what I'm saying is, let's let's let's. Well, then I'm going to call it into question again. Okay, <laughs> like, well, you, you, well fine, it. fine. Call it in question, and you can disagree. But if I say I'm only eating the equivalent of two animals a year, is that better than someone who eats 300 animals a year? Is it? Is it? Yeah, or is clearly, it, it clearly. is. Okay, it is. So I am, as a carnivore, perhaps well, more. Well, well, I, wait, as wait, a carnivore, wait, wait, wait. I'm perhaps wait, wait, wait. more. One second, one second, one second. Okay, okay. I, I well, just want to clear this up. Okay. I just want to clear this up. Eating two animals a year or responsible for two animal deaths a year? Because both of those things are compatible with the same number of animals dying. Eating two animals a year or being responsible for the death of two animals per year? I don't see what the difference is. If you're eating them, obviously they're dead. Say person, say I mean, somebody is are. eating 100 animals. Say somebody is eating 98 animals a year and it takes two animals to get those 98. And you have somebody who's eating two animals a year, but it takes 98 animals to, to get those two animals. Both are responsible for the same amount of animal death, but they're eating two different proportions of animals. So it's like, which one are you claiming? That you're only eating two a year or that I'm you're eating the, I'm eating the equivalent of two animals per year, right? 
Because I yeah, want, sure, but yeah. that's compatible with that entailing more animal death. From where? From crops you're talking about? It, it's just compatible with you. It, it, it's compatible with there being more animal death. I'm not the only guy to, eating to, stuff. To acquire though. those. I'm not the only guy right, eating right, right. stuff, right? So there's so, so it gets divided up. You don't just kill an animal. You don't just kill one element, elephant and then one person eats it. It's, the issue uh, maybe here 100 is people that eat it. If, the, if the proposition is that you're responsible for less animal death, that's just not evidence for the claim. That you're only eating two animals. That's just not evidence for the claim. If I only eat cows and I don't eat little shrimps and I don't eat chickens, it is very plausible that I'm eating less animal animals altogether at the end of the day. Plausible? Yeah, it's very plausible. I mean, plausible, plausible it's, it's, sure, but I, whether it's or not mostly, it's probable, it's very, it's pro- you, you're going to need empirics. It's, it's you're going to need empirics to show whether or not it's probable. Plausible, I can just trivially grant. Of course, it's like possible that it's true. I think it would fall under the realm of common sense to most people. You could sit in there and we could sit there. It's pretty shitty evidence. We could sit there and obviously trace every molecule that I eat and where it came from, as could you, which would be an exercise in futility because no one's going to ever do that. So we have to have some reasonable sense of groundwork here. If you eat only beef, there's less animals probably dying at the end. Not counting crop deaths, which you don't think count, right? You use the word probable, which is a statistical term. So I'm assuming that you have some statistics to back up that claim. Do you? Yes or no? Yes. A cow is much bigger than a chicken. Okay. Can I see those statistics? <laughs> Let's see. A cow weighs something like 1,200 pounds. A chicken weighs something like seven pounds or something like that. I don't, so, I don't see how that matters. Because there's more meat on one animal than the other. Yeah, but we're talking. are we talking about total animal death or just how many you're eating in a year? Because I'm not disputing how many you're eating. If I were to eat a whale... Right. That could feed me for probably two decades. Right. So if in versus if I ate mice, it's clear. It's clear to anybody that you're killing less animals have to die to produce that amount of food. I don't, I, I don't know why you're appealing to like popular intuitions. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for empirics. A whale is You're bigger, making an empirical claim. Uh, it requires uh, empirical evidence. A whale is bigger so than if a mouse. You were, if you were raising whales, you're going to need to feed them a lot of animals, right? They, so yeah, yeah, yeah they're, carn- they're carnivores. That's interesting. It's one of those exactly. things. They're going to eat a lot of krill. But the point is that krill. it's not just about the one whale that you eat. It's about the process of getting the whale to... To, to feed. A so a whale kills a lot of krill that. and that doesn't matter because it's like they're okay. They're minor, small things. Maybe the krill are eating algae or something. They're killing some crop for some other species. Like I said, it's a very circular argument, but. Okay. Wait, 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 so wait, wait. Can we do something then? Uh, unless you want to do something different, Nick, you were about to go on to, you said the meat of the argument kind of thing. I was interested. Yeah. You there's a that. way to cut straight to the heart of the matter. Yeah, okay. Here. Go ahead. Go ahead. But like you use the term circular arguments. I wanted to know what you were referring to there. Let's spend time. Let's get to your meat of the argument because you've got something because we're running, okay. out, running out of time. I don't want to just. Okay. Around around. So this is a question I've wanted to ask you for a while because I think the answer to this question uh, may be more important than any of the empirics that we could talk about with respect to like the health of diet a versus diet b say like i don't know plant-based versus carnivore or whatever because you would agree like if eating mexicans for example granted us like (laughs) it was like the fountain of youth if like eating mexicans made us live to 200 and we were just like youthful for that entire time you wouldn't sign off on like farming mexicans to eat right no i would not i think think look i will let me just put it out there i think human life is much more valuable than animal right. life. Okay. So, so all I want, all I'm trying to establish there is that there are superseding ethical considerations, even in your position. Sure. Of right? course. Of course. Okay. I want to know what is untrue of animals or what is true of animals that is untrue of humans that if made true of humans would cause humans to lose sufficient moral value such that we would be justified doing the things to humans that we currently do to animals. Like, factory farming them and killing them and eating them. Yeah. So humans are not animals. They never will be animals. And or sorry, humans are animals, but the animals will never be human. No, there's no matter. There's nothing you can do to those animals to make them human. Yeah. That's not uh, an answer to the question though. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I, I reject the premise of the question because there's not, if you get an, you, let's say a dog started talking to me in English and started to recite, lit, produce literature and could type and do all these wonderful things. It would still be a dog in my mind. So there's nothing well, you can do that. And this might be a nitpick. This might be a yeah. nitpick, but questions don't have premises. So I like just what is true of an animal that is untrue of a human that if made true of a human would justify us slaughtering them for meat. That's all I'm asking. Like, what is the differential property between humans and animals that justifies the asymmetrical treatment in your mind? 
There, there must be something, Sean. Yeah, there are different species. They're different species. Well, th I'm a species. I am clearly a speciesist. I don't mind that that label. No, that, that's not. We can get. We can explore that. But that's not an answer to the question. And, and, the, and the question is, would I eat another human being? This is what you're getting at. And I've already said, no, in no, the no, right no, no, circumstances. No, no. That's, that's that not what I'm getting at. That's not what I'm getting at. That's not what. I don't care what you would do personally. I'm asking what you find morally acceptable. Those are two two different things, right? So. All I want to know is what justifies the asymmetrical treatment between humans and animals. That's all I want to know. There are inherent what differences. Is, there are many differences. There are, there are literally thousands and but, thousands but of differences between me and a dog. The, the, any of them, all of them. Is, all or any of them. Is any, okay, so wait, you said all of them. All so or any of them. There are different species. There are different critters. I will eat all, critters. I'm wait, not going to go over <laughs> eat humans, right? All or any of them. So if we took a human hair and put it on a cow, they would no longer be morally right to No, there's still a mind? cow because you haven't replaced the rest of it. If they turned but into a human being. you said all or any. You right, said all right, or right. any if traits. You, if you covered a cow in human hair, it would still be a cow to me. I'd still eat it. If a cow started talking, if a cow started talking, I would still eat it eventually. It might not be the first cow. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Okay, wait, okay, wait, wait, wait. You said all or any traits, right? But what's logically entailed from that is that if you took a human hair and put it on a cow, then it would be ethical to it would, it would still be ethical to like kill the cow. Or if you sure. took a cow hair and put it on a human, then it would because be, it's still a it human. Would, it would still be ethical human. to if, kill the human. If like I, that's what's logically entailed. I just want to I just want to get clear. That's what's logically entailed from what you just said. So if let's say suddenly you implanted a horn on your head, Nick, there's some people with body modification, people that are thinking I'm now I'm a cow. I would still not eat the human unless I was again, unless we we're in the Andes. Right, and so is starving, the trait right? just being human? Because we can. Yeah, yeah the trait is just being any, human. The trait like is just being human. Any, the trait is just being is human. It's like a ridiculous thing to say. Right. So being, question, being, but, but just being human. a human takes it off the plate for me. Right. So there okay, you go. Okay. In, in less extreme circumstances. That's all it is. Can I, then I have a follow up question. Can it be, please just engage with the line of reasoning. Like I have a follow-up question. So let's say that we discover a group of beings that were identical to humans in every way, except for a cluster of genetics that push them outside of the distribution of homo. Would it be ethical to just. So if we ran a bunch of like, let's say we had a bunch of homo erectus still running around. Yeah, sure. Okay. I would be less inclined to eat them. How's that? Not do I know that I wouldn't eat them? Like I said, well, this is a matter. Yes no, like, I know. I would. would it I probably would. I, would it be morally permissible? I don't know. I'm not the ultimate authority on that. But and I probably personally would not probably eat another Homo erectus. Okay. But I don't. They don't exist. This is a situation that doesn't exist and probably never will exist. So if we talk you in fantasy, where we can. Authority. You are the. I'm ultimate not the authority. ultimate. No, 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 no. You let me finish my sentence. You are the ultimate authority on what you consider okay and not okay. Sure, you, sure, you are sure. the ultimate authority on that. Sure, so what sure. I'm asking is, okay, so would, would I? So okay? I probably would need a. I, if there were, if we found a group of Homo erectus walking around, I probably would not eat them, and I probably would not advocate. That's not what I'm for asking. It. I'm not asking if you would eat them or not. I'm asking whether or not you think it would be okay if we ate them the same way we eat cows: string them up upside down, slit their throats, eat their meat. Again, for me, and again, I don't know what other people. It's consider. just a yes or no, Sean. I can't speak for everybody else. I can speak for myself. I'm, I'm, myself I'm not personally, you to. I'm asking for your position, whether or not you think that's okay or not okay for me to do. Yeah, or, yeah, or, I, or, I, or, I, I, I probably for it to be done for it to be done <laughs> for because you, be you said you wouldn't be okay with killing with you wouldn't be okay with other people killing Mexicans to live to two hundred. So I'm a, I'm asking you, like, would you be OK for it to be done that these people that these beings that are like humans in every way, except for a cluster of genetics that pushes them outside of the distribution of homeless? Would you be OK with them being factory farmed is the question. If they're the same as humans, no. OK, so that's a contradiction. OK, it's a contradiction. OK, but I'm not I'm okay, still, so not, I'm still, like, I'm still <laughs> eating cows. I'm still eating pigs. I'm still eating chickens. You can come up with some crazy argument that's never going to exist. That's fine. But I'm still going to eat pigs and cows and chickens. They're far enough difference to me. I well, get what that. What are those differences, Sean? Like, can I just ask you, you you're so fine. Well, with he, it. he said they're not human. That's the difference. I know, but but like, how is that relevant, mate? They still feel pain. They still suffer. They still have the desires. I'm okay, I'm okay with that. So I'm okay with it. I'm okay with them being dead and I'm okay with them suffering to some degree. Now, I think we should do it in as humane a way as reasonably possible. And I think there can would be improvement. I think there could be some improvement. What's that? Survive? If we could just not do it at all and it didn't need to exist in this earth, all this suffering, all this death, 
We could still live to the same age. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Enjoy our yes. That would, would be fine. Be that would world without it. Sure. Sure. I agree with that. That's fine. But I don't think it will be, and it won't be for me, and it won't be for all the people that are in this audience that have already tried vegan or have already done that, and it didn't work for them. There are countless number of people that have tried a vegan diet and it didn't work for them. Now you'll say, a lot of people say they were never vegan. So I would ask you, James, if 20 years from now you give up veganism, does that mean you were never a vegan right now? If no, I would consider myself a vegan now, but if I was to give up veganism, then that means you were never were a vegan. A right? Does that mean you never that's were a vegan? Does that mean you were never were a vegan? It just doesn't really make sense to me. Like I would give up believing that animals deserve rights. How, what but you eat them happens? anyway. But if you eat, what if you had to eat them anyway for your health? Because if we're playing hypothetical, crazy space creature, alien uh-huh. eating, if we're, if we're saying that, so let's, because there are a lot of vegans that for whatever reason, it didn't work out for them. They just didn't feel good. They got sick and they had to. And many of these people in this room will verify that because they've done that incorporate animal products back in their diet for their own health reasons. And again, it's somewhere where you draw the line. So if, and I hear a lot of people say those people were never really vegan because they gave up their ethics. And so does that apply to everybody that doesn't die a vegan? Is that, is that, so if you don't die a vegan, you were never vegan. Is that a fair statement? Somebody who feels like they need to stop being vegan. I think they almost always 99.99% of the time could have found a way to be vegan and be perfectly healthy and sort their issues out without leading to consuming flesh. I, that's my understanding of things, but the question specifically is, were they always vegan or or were they never vegan? Most people, there's a lot of different types of vegans, I would say, Sean, and some of them have thought more deeply about the topic than others by far. Some just have seen slaughter footage once, thought about it for the moment, started eating a plant-based diet, lived their life. Some people have really given this a lot of topic, like I would say myself, a lot of thought, like I would say myself, Nick, and people probably even more than both of us. And when you've got to the point where you've really, you really understand, I would say, and this is something that I'm trying to understand still for you. I hope we have time to discuss a little bit more. When you really understand that they are similar beings, you're saying they're, they're so different. They're a different species. They're different enough that it's fine to slaughter them. I have no problem slaughtering them. Slaughtering them is good with me. If you, I, I believe that if we had more time to talk about this and discuss this or something like that, you gave it more consideration or you were honest. I don't know if you're being honest. I am just taking you at face value for what you're saying and assuming you are. Then I think you would come to a similar conclusion because I think it's extremely logical to see these obviously similar beings with a heart and a brain, with a consciousness, sentience, an experience, an individual experience. It, they are so similar. So when they bleed and when they suffer and all these things that we would never do to Mexicans or to any other humans, I don't see how you're getting to the point of saying, this is totally fine. And so if you were to say to me, in 20 years, if you weren't vegan anymore, were you ever vegan? Well, right now I am vegan and I believe in animal rights. And in 20 years, the only way I could stop that belief of animal rights, like it just can't happen, I don't believe, because it's... Like what information could possibly come out that there, it just, there's nothing. There's nothing no information that's going to come out. There's always the an animal dying is it's sad. It's tragic, but it's done regularly. It's going to be, it's going to happen. Ultimately, almost all animals are going to end up food for something at some point, whether it lives out of national life expectancy or it's bred into existence for that. They're ultimately, we all have the same, but we're going to be eaten by worms and insects and microorganisms. We all turn into food at some point, right? We clearly know that. The fact that changes, it's not that. The fact that changes is your own perception of your health is what changes. What's happened, if you look into this audience, almost all of them are older folks in there that have lived, they lived into their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, and they found out that, wait a minute, what I was doing was not healthy for me. It was causing me pain and suffering. I don't want to do that. Now, as a physician, I've taken care of literally thousands upon thousands of people that have suffered tremendously. And it's not good to see that human suffering to me is more important than animal suffering. And I know people, you may be disturbed by that thought, but to me, okay, so I don't want to see humans suffer. Now, if in, in a fantasy world, everybody could eat chocolate cake, plant-based chocolate cake and live to a hundred and be healthy and robust, I'd be all behind that. But that's not the reality of the world, at least in my world. When I see people that have tried various diets. I don't necessarily think carnivore is the best diet for every human on the planet. I've never advocated, you'll never hear me advocating that all humans need to be carnivore. I don't think it's practical. I don't think it's possible. Just like I don't think everybody needs to be on a vegan diet. And I don't think it's practical or possible either. You're going to have to grow crops of any sort. You're going to need animals 
on the planet to, to, to protect the soil. So there's reasons for this stuff. And so we can all take different approaches at the end of the day. And because we're running out of time here, I want humans to be healthy and happy and thriving. And I think the main problem is the fact that we eat this franken horrible processed garbage that everybody's consuming. I don't think it's the animal products and I don't necessarily think it's the, the vegetables, but I think there's something in between that. And if we just realize that, hey, if we got healthy, happy humans that are more healthy, we're going to have a better planet. We're going to have a better relationship. We're going to be able to more better to further improve life on this planet. But when we've got everybody that's sick and you don't have to look around, I don't know where you're at. I, th- I, know, I know you're like, where are you at, James? You're in like somewhere in Thailand or something like that. I'm in Brazil. Are you in, oh, you're in Brazil now. Okay, well, cool. But if you look around, you can see we're not in a position where everybody's healthy. And the more sick people we have, that are either physically sick, mentally sick, we have a worse society. And so we need people with good, strong health to solve these problems. And so that is what I'm trying to do because every day, and I know you guys don't believe it, I see literally, I spent every day of my life, seven days a week talking to people about nutrition, about health, about diet. And without exception, every day I see people whose health is improved by including a lot of animal products in their diet. And that's just the real, my reality. And that's what shapes my worldview. And that's why I do what I do. It's not because I like animal suffering and I want to kill as many animals as possible. It's just because I value human life above any other form of life on this planet. And that's just my, my, my perspective. So Sean, if you could get your clients to the same amount of health using a vegan diet, would you agree that would be a better choice? Potential, yeah, potential, yeah, potential, yeah, yeah. Like if we had no animals, animal death, and we could have equal health, sure, you'd sign me up for that. But that's not the real. That's not my reality, right? You're just not convinced that there's evidence to show that a vegan diet is sufficient. No, I think there are some people that do very well on a vegan diet, but I don't think everybody does, and I know I wouldn't, and I know a lot of the people that I've already. Have you? I'm more curious. Like, do you think that the evidence in terms of like. The quality evidence we've got out there. You're talking about you've had these one-on-one experiences. You've spoken to hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. And would you suggest that the evidence out there supports your opinion that, I don't know if you say that most people wouldn't do well on a vegan diet, but my opinion would be that most people will do well on an adequately planned vegan diet. And I think that the evidence supports that. So would you disagree Well, I mean, the evidence, so I guess the question is, why don't we have 90% universal adoption of veganism right now? If that were so healthy in the past, because I, 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 I think that most humans, myself included, <laughs> if we could end all animal death, we would probably agree with that. But the problem Sean, is it doesn't Sean happen is, because it hasn't, because it doesn't happen because-, because people are, love eating meat, mate. Why do they, they, they do that? Why do they love eating meat? Why, bad, why do you say- They love the taste of flesh. Why, you know, why do you think that is? Up with it. Why do you think- People find out- Why? Because well, it's salty and fatty. And, um, but why are we intrinsically programmed to like that then? It wouldn't matter to me, even if we but were. Why, but why? Was, but is there an, evo- was there an evolution? It wouldn't matter to me. It wouldn't matter it, to it, me. It, because at the trivial. end of the day, yeah, it's trivial. At the end of the day, <laughs> if we don't need it, like someone might say the similar thing, oh, our canines, you have canines and point to these tiny little pointy teeth. So we should eat meat. We're made to eat meat. I wouldn't care if my, my teeth don't dictate the actions I take in life, assuming that I can thrive and support myself on a plant-based diet. That's, and that's an assumption that not everybody else has. Guys, I apologize. We're, this is this has been fun. I do have to go, unfortunately, guys. Thank you for being with Nick, James, thanks for doing this. Maybe we'll pick up a round two down the road. I, unfortunately, I do have to go. Thanks, everybody else, for being here. You guys take care and appreciate you coming on. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.